welcome to ultimate survival gear today as you guys can see i have something yet again from nortiv 8 actually haven't had this brand uh, on this channel for a while and really happy because uh, the last boots that i reviewed from them were pretty good let's open up the box and see what we got because these are there ultra popular i mean super popular nortiv 8 hiking boots Check these out, waterproof, mid-size, can't go wrong, pretty good comfort overall, under $50, no wonder why they have over 8,000 reviews on Amazon, I mean, wow, over 8,000, these are very, very popular. So overall, if you don't have time to watch the whole review, although if you are considering this boost, I highly recommend watching the whole review. But if you don't have time to watch the whole review, overall, if you really are planning to save some serious money on your hiking boots and you really are not doing anything serious, anything complicated, no complicated hikes, no complicated terrain, nothing, you know, nothing crazy, all right? You're not doing the hikes for extended periods of time, something very basic. This is pretty good. I mean, for $50, you can't go wrong. They're comfortable, they have waterproofing, they have decent outsole, decent features, which we will talk about in details later. For 50 bucks, it's a great price. The link is in the description below. But, like I said, if you are more or less serious about the hike, I recommend watching the whole review so that you understand what this offers and what the boots, you know, in the $150 range. <laughs> offer the difference between the two so without further ado let's get into it the criteria number one that we make the judgment on on this channel is comfort level of course and in order to test the comfort level i do a three mile run in the booth yes without stopping and then a five mile walk without stopping without any pauses in between and then i continue wearing the boots or shoes whatever i'm testing for the rest of the day so that the total wear time is about eight hours and like i said overall these are pretty comfortable there are a few things of course that contribute or take away from the comfort level first of all would be the weight and overall feels fairly lightweight a little bit maybe on the heavier side but let's find out exactly how light or heavy these boots are i would say probably should be somewhere around 16 ounce i think well, let's find out if I'm correct. This is size 10 and size 10 is, wow, I was really off. Man, I haven't been doing this reviews for a while. I really need to <laughs> sharpen my estimate. 22.2, okay, so this is definitely on the heavier side. Now, to kind of give you the reference numbers so that you can understand where I'm coming from with the numbers. If you are getting into mid-size waterproof boots, you want to try to find something under 20 ounce. The more under 20 ounce, the lighter it's going to be. The more over 20 ounce, now it gets into that heavier category. So, with an expensive boot, right? I'm talking 100 to 150 dollar range. You're probably going to get a lightweight. Obviously, the material is going to be the fabric is going to be more expensive because it is you know waterproof it offers all the qualities durability but at the same time it's has that weight lightweight weight reduction right so that's where the price comes comes into play as you can see this is gets into the heavyweight category now if you're doing some light hikes nothing serious you know you, you're doing an easy to moderate hike for a few hours you are really not going to notice that you know, five, six ounce difference in the weight. It is when you get into that longer distance, longer hikes, you know, I'm talking about stuff over, you know, three, four, five miles, 10 miles a day, covering the distance for a few days in a row, that's when you start noticing that weight on your feet. And believe me, the lighter the boots are on your feet, obviously the easier it becomes to walk for extended periods of time makes sense another thing that uh, takes away or contributes to the comfort level is of course the flexibility of the outsole and here as you can see it is actually pretty good it is not too flimsy at all it definitely has good stiffness 
to it. It's not a cheap quality rubber, it's a decent quality rubber. It's not a quality expensive rubber, which we will talk about in the outsole, but it overall preserves that stiffness, which you kind of do want, and at the same time doesn't take away from the flexibility. Also, what I wanted to point out, as you can see here in the creasing sections so that where, it, where it creases, it actually does not create any unnecessary pressure points except for this fairly soft fabric. Moving on to the fairly soft fabric, let's talk about the padding. As you can see, the tongue is nicely padded. Overall, this is not a very stiff padding. It's more of a softer, flimsy kind of padding, which is really not a big deal, which is normal, what you would expect in your cheaper hiking boots. Same kind of padding in the shaft, in the heel, and then throughout the whole boot, you have a very nice, comfortable padding. Uh, so it's, it's very, very comfortable to wear this. Now moving further, I'm gonna take out the inner sole so that you can see. And as you can see, the inner sole here is very nicely padded. It's very cushiony. So if you prefer a nice, soft, foam feel kind of inner sole, you're gonna appreciate this one because there's plenty of padding. It's really, really good inner sole. I like it. Not much of the arch support, not much of the heel bed. If that's what you're looking for, I mean, you can always replace the inner sole, not a big deal, but the inner sole that the boots come with, it's actually very, very good. So overall, on the comfort level, this is a really, really good boot. The only thing that takes away realistically from the comfort level is that extra, you know, five, six ounces of weight because with a mid-size waterproof, I would probably wanna go somewhere around 16, maybe 17 ounces weight whenever it comes to the size 10. Okay, let's move on to the uh, criteria number two now, which is the proofing and protection. Like I said, these are waterproof. No fancy waterproofing. This is Nortif's eight main waterproofing, their own waterproofing technology, which works fairly well. As you can see, the tongue here is gusseted and very nicely, it's really good. So definitely credit there to Nortif for implementing the full size of the shaft for the waterproofing. And I have my ruler over here, as you can see, it's about almost six inches of clearance whenever it comes to the gusseting point. And then the lowest point of the shaft is almost six inches as well. So yes, Nortif 8 utilize the whole length of the shaft, which is excellent. Sometimes I see expensive boots and they don't do it. They have a you know six inch shaft and then they only do like four inches of waterproofing in, in the gusseting, which is completely silly. Not the case here. All right, let's talk about the protection now. You have a little bit of a reinforcement here in the toe box, which is pretty good. Definitely gonna help you on the rocky road, protecting you from small rock. Overall, keep in mind though, the toe box is pretty soft, so don't drop anything heavy on it. Obviously, with all this padding, which is not really that stiff, it's more of a, a softer, mushy feel, so don't bang your ankles or anything. But still, you do have a coverage for ankles, which is nice. Same thing with the heel. You have a little bit of kind of a reinforcement fabric going here at the back. And obviously, you have plenty of protection from the bottom, but we'll talk about the outsole later. Let's move on to the criteria number three, quality and the design features. Now, Nortif 8, they're a good company. They're a pretty good company. They specialize more in cheaper budget, more you know affordable stuff whenever it comes to outdoors, tactical boots, military boots. They have plenty of stuff. I have reviewed their tactical boots and they were really good. You know, for the price, they were really good. Same same thing with their hiking boots. So as long as you don't have your expectations too high for the price point, you're gonna appreciate their products and looks like they know what they're doing because you get decent comfort, you have you know smart gusseting, you have good outsole, good pattern, we'll talk about that later, decent protection. So they know what they're doing and they just obviously try to make it you know, in a very affordable package. And you can see, you can judge by eight, over 8,000 reviews, almost five stars on this particular boot. Amazon link is in the description below. Check out the reviews. I mean, people love these boots. So yeah, obviously, that, that definitely shows. Now, whenever it comes to the design features, usually hear about the lacing system. Lacing system here, the lace itself is very good. I like it. It's a stiff, round string, which is 
honestly my favorite whenever it comes to the lacing system it's really good my probably only i'm not really complain but something that i'm not a huge fan of is that there are three pairs of open hooks there are three pairs of closed hooks and three pairs of open hooks i think it's a little bit too much three pairs is a little bit too much i would say one pair maybe two pairs of open hooks is enough because the whole purpose of the open hooks is that you can release the tension quickly if you're going down the hill if you're going up the hill especially going up the hill you want to release the tension a little bit so that there is no pressure point when if it's tightened here you know you want to kind of release it a little bit that's where the open hooks come into play that's why they're good on the hiking boots three open hooks three pairs that is it's a little bit too much kind of unnecessary but really not that big of a deal just something for you to keep in mind okay let's move on to the criteria number four now outsole traction and stability now whenever i do my run and my walk i do it on a variety of different surfaces let me mute my phone over here um i start off on the uh older asphalt going on to the newer tarmac then i get into the sand dry sand wet sand dry grass wet grass then the rocky road then i go into the trail surface concrete marble tile just everything i can find and the outsole here is actually pretty decent it's uh more on as you can see there is even though there is this pretty decent de design pattern it's more on the flatter side so it is a little bit slippery on surfaces like wet grass it's a little bit slippery because it's just not enough aggression as you can see these grooves right here they do look sharp but because the rubber is i mean it's not cheap rubber but it's not the good quality rubber either i mean which you would expect from something that costs 50 dollars for a hiking boot right so don't expect too much from this outsole it will be slippery on wet grass it will be slippery on shiny surfaces like marble tile it is a little bit slippery on stuff like wet grass wet sand because there is lacking aggression and the reason why the, the aggression is lacking lacking is not because of the design pattern but because just the quality of the rubber itself is just not there so if you stick with easy motor hikes you will be just fine but if you're doing a little bit something more complicated obviously i would recommend looking around some more and getting something more serious for more serious hikes okay let's move on really quickly to the criteria number five temperature now whenever it comes to the temperature obviously no point to talk about winter because these are not winter boots they're not insulated yes they're waterproof yes you can get away with these in some colder temperatures especially if you implement some insulated socks but this is i would say more of kind of a three season with some mild winters all right yes you can wear them in the snow because they're waterproof but still keep that in mind now in hot weather they are decent they're fairly breathable not too hot so as a summer boot depending on what kind of hike you're doing you might be okay with that as well okay let's move on to the criteria number six really quickly sizing these are true to the size no problems with sizing at all usually here i recommend getting half a size bigger whenever it comes to your boots uh over your normal shoe size so you have a little bit of extra space here in the toe box helps with the comfort let's move on to the criteria number seven now balance of application so if this was not just your hiking boot but more of ultimate survival boot after all this is ultimate survival gear channel so we talk about the survival gear here so something bad happened and you were surviving and this was the boot that you were wearing would this be good for all these different things well for 50 dollars again don't expect too much from it yes it's comfortable yes it's not obnoxiously heavy and nothing like that the outsole is decent for fifty dollars it's definitely decent the lacing system is okay the waterproofing is good so overall you really are getting what you paid for so if you are on the strict budget this is a pretty good option and yes let's move on to the criteria number eight the price yes the price is 49 49 yes so 49 dollars 49 cents almost 50 bucks that's amazing okay because if you are looking for something like this in the midsize with a waterproofing something that is really 
high credit, serious high credit, you're looking at least, at least at, you know, around $80 starting. And that, that would be Colombia or, or Timberland. Going further, you getting into Salomon, La Sportiva, even more serious stuff, you're looking at $130, $150. So three times less of that price, it's, it's very impressive of what uh, Nortif 8 put together over here. So if you really are on a strict budget, that is, is going to be completely fine. If, if you're not expecting any kind of serious hikes, this will be completely fine. If you're doing something a little bit more serious though, check out other reviews that I've done on this channel. I've done plenty, so I'm sure you will be able to find something that suits your needs. So let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you think about these boots? What do you think about this review? If you have any requests for reviews, drop them in the comments below and now we'll be happy to address them. Thank you very much guys for watching. This was Ultimate Survival Gear. I'll see you guys in the next video.